Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and joining us for the Southern Oregon Weather Weekend Update. First, we'll recap the storm that just moved out of our area and dropped some rain and snow on the Southern Oregon Cascades and Siskiyous. Then we'll discuss the next rain and snow event. When can we expect a return to cooler and wetter weather? And then we'll talk about some long-range trends. Are those trends that I talked about a few days ago still showing up in the models? So on the left, you see the GO satellite imagery from NOAA. Uh, you can see mainly our area here is um, covered by partly cloudy skies. You see most of the clouds and storminess moving off to the east. That was the system that moved in overnight. But right now, there's really not very much going on when we look at the radar from the KMAX on top of Mount Ashland. Some light showers over the Cascades and some clouds hanging around Mount Ashland as well. So how did the storm do? Forecasts were generally calling for 6 to 12 inches for the Southern Oregon Cascades and up to 3 or 4 inches, potentially as much as 6 inches for the Siskiyous. Mount Ashland at 6 a.m. reported that they had 1 inch of snow at the snow stake in the last 24 hours. And when I was skiing up there today, it felt more like 2 or 3 inches. So in general, um, the storm did underperform a little bit, but storm totals were closer to um, what was expected than Mount Ashland's snow report would have suggested. You can see uh, current road cameras uh, at Lake of the Woods, Den Indian Memorial Summit, and Union Creek, all showing some snow that fell overnight. Of course, some of that's melted off. Uh, you can see Union Creek already has a high of 38 degrees. Um, but in general, most areas in the Southern Oregon Cascades and Siskiyous did pick up a couple inches of snow. So let's briefly look at what we can expect for the rest of the week in terms of weather. Uh, this is from the Weather Channel, and it looks like gradually we'll see some clearing skies, some sunny skies toward the middle of the week, and temperatures gradually creeping up to average and maybe even a little bit above by the end of the week. Now I'm using the Weather Channel specifically because uh, on average, the Weather Channel has been 8 percentage points, 7 to 8 percentage points more accurate than the National Weather Service forecast, um, both for uh, the last month and for the last year. When we look at major cities uh, relatively close to us, like San Francisco and Seattle, Washington, the Weather Channel has just done a much better job than the National Weather Service forecast. And the reason for this is actually because um, the Weather Channel uses an algorithm that prioritizes weather models that have done particularly well uh, recently. So let's say you have the GFS US model, you have the Canadian model, you have the European ECMWF. The Weather Channel algorithm will look at all those models and choose the one that has outperformed the others and give that more weight in its forecast. So this really shows the power of uh, computer algorithms and some artificial intelligence when it comes to weather forecasting. I also encourage you to read Cliff Mass's blog uh, on the subject. Uh, he also highly recommends the Weather Channel app for the same reason. So what are we doing here at Southern Oregon Weather that's different? Well, I like to take you behind the scenes and show you the actual models that the Weather Channel is using uh, in its algorithm to construct its forecast. So let's take a look at some of those models. The reason that the Weather Channel is calling for generally sunny skies and warming temperatures throughout the week is because we have this building ridge of high pressure over the area. Here you can see um, it's centered roughly over Oregon and Washington. And the reason why uh, this ridge of high pressure is not going to lead to extremely warm temperatures is because it's not very strong. You see these lighter orange and red colors as opposed to some stronger orange and red colors south of the Aleutians. So because this is a, a relatively modest ridge of high pressure, we're just going to see a generally pleasant and pretty seasonable weather for the end of the week. However, this looks to change going into next weekend. Uh, once again, we are facing the possibility of seeing a storm system for the weekend. Here's the GEFS American Ensemble model. So again, an ensemble blends together many different computer model runs and looks at the average. So it's somewhat more accurate than relying on um, any single 
model run like the GFS or the Canadian CMC. So here you can see this trough, this area of storminess and, and cooler and wetter weather indicated by these blue colors dropping down from the Gulf of Alaska and moving into the Pacific Northwest. So here are two of the models that we've talked about, the GFS in the lower right hand corner and the GEM or the CMC, the Canadian model in the upper left hand corner. Um, this is the system that is expected to move through this coming weekend. You can see um, it comes in in a northwest flow pattern and drops a pretty healthy amount of rain and snow on the Southern Oregon Cascades and Siskiyous. So the, um, the, the little video clip here runs from uh, roughly Saturday night until Monday morning. So we have the initial system moving in on uh, Saturday night into early Sunday and then some showers lingering into Monday. It's too early to talk about amounts at this point. So far, this storm has shown up on several model runs for the past several days, and so there's growing confidence that this is going to happen. However, what we have seen a lot of times this winter is stronger storm systems show up on the model runs roughly about a week out, and then with each successive model run, they gradually get weaker and weaker and weaker. So for you rain and snow lovers, let's hope that the model runs continue to show a relatively robust system as we head toward the weekend. So what can we expect after that system moves through? I think even if we don't see a healthy shot of rain and snow, we'll definitely see some, some cooling temperatures. So after this coming weekend, what can we expect? Well, here we see the GEFS, once again, the American Ensemble model. And here in the upper left-hand corner, you see what is showing at day 10. These orange and red colors once again indicate ridging, drying and warming, and um, the, the blue colors indicate troughing over the central part of the United States. However, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, that's now 16 days out. So by day 16, the GEFS is backing up this ridge and moving it away from the west coast into the Gulf of Alaska, um, south of the Aleutians. And that in turn drives a trough into the western part of the United States, which would indicate a return to storminess. So is this supported by some other models? Well, let's look at the GEPS. Once again, there's day 10 on the upper left-hand corner of your screen. We see uh, a pretty strong signal for day 10 uh, for ridging dry and warm weather on the GEPS. Once again, that troughing is heading into the central part of the United States. But the GEPS also slowly backs up that ridge into the Gulf of Alaska by day 16 and tries to move some troughing into the western part of the United States. Now you can see the difference here between the GEPS and the GEFS. The GEPS by day 16 shows the ridging a little bit closer to the coast, so it's not as strong of a signal for a return to stormy weather um, by the beginning of March but it's still a possibility. So why are the models showing this? Uh, last week, or excuse me, a few days ago, we talked about the Madden-Julian oscillation. This is basically areas of storminess that move across the Indian Ocean, and believe it or not, that area of storminess and the Indian Ocean profoundly influences our weather across the United States and here in Southern Oregon. So um, on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see uh, the American model, the GEFS, taking the Madden-Julian oscillation from phases five and six over into phase eight, and then looping it back towards seven at the end of the forecast period. So if we look at the influence that phases seven and eight have on our weather in the United States, we see that phase eight produces warmer weather across the west and cooler weather across the east, but then phase seven shows colder weather across the west and warmth across the east. So it looks like that is why the GEFS is first showing some warmer and drier weather around the day 10 time period and then a shift to cooler and wetter weather around day 16. In the middle of the screen we see the Canadian models version of its MJO forecast and it pretty much keeps it in phases 5 and 6. And once again, when we look at those temperature patterns, we see 
um, some cooler weather across the west. So that that falls also in line with the GEFS's idea of that ridge shifting away from the west coast into the Gulf of Alaska, allowing more storminess to return to Oregon. Finally, on the right, we see the European Center um, and its forecast for the Madden-Julian Oscillation. And you can see it takes it into phase eight and then takes it into what is called the null phase. That's that circle in the center of the chart here where the MJO really doesn't have that much influence. Um, so the ECM, the European model, really isn't as optimistic as the other two models for a return to cold at the end of the month and the beginning of March, but it could still be a possibility. So to recap, uh, first we can expect dry and predominantly sunny weather and a gradual warming trend through this week, but there's growing confidence in colder and wetter weather for this weekend. In the long range, uh, we're still looking at those ideas that we talked about a few days ago, maybe some dry and warmer weather about 10 days out, followed by a possible return to storminess in early March. It will really depend on what the Madden-Julian oscillation does. If it moves into those colder phases, then a return to storminess is a greater possibility. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to set your notifications for the coming midweek update in a few days. And please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content.